Welcome to Noise11.com. Eric Avery and Perry Farrell from Jane's Addiction, who must be about ready to pack the bags for the Australian tour. I think last time was 2010, Eric. Uh, but that was that was around the time you left the band. Were you here in the 2010 tour? I was. I was. Those were the last shows, I believe, actually, were, were the ones down in Australia. Wow. Yeah. Well, Each time. Great. It's great to have you back then, uh, then Eric, because uh, quite frankly, the last band you were in was Garbage. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah well i'm happy to be back though yeah perry uh 2010 uh 2003 1999 1996 for porno for the pyro porno for pyro so you've had uh quite a number of tours uh in australia and uh they've been very very successful you you, you know the land well but it's been a long time it's been like 13 years since we've seen you down here i know i'm so glad that i'm still alive I can come back. <laughs> there has been some new music. Now, I, I did note that you uh, you uh, played a song called True Love uh, recently. So is that part of an upcoming Jane's Addiction album? Yeah. Yeah, We um, our plan is we, we first go down to Australia and have another great time down there. And then when we get back, we go right into the studio. And... Uh, Eric's fourth record with me. Mm -hmm. We start our fourth record together. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you've you've uh, previewed True Love. Uh, will there be other previews prior to the album coming out? Ooh, I don't know, Eric. What do you think? <laughs> I don't. I don't know, Perry. I I'm down. I'm down. We could bring one out while we're down yeah. in Australia. All right, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> we're ready for it. Australia has waited 13 years for Jane's Addiction. We deserve a new Jane's Addiction song when you get here. All right. But, At least one. No, no. I'm down for it. Yeah. We, you know, there's this one song that we were, we've were we been meaning to do live that we haven't done yet. And uh, I think it might be just a, a touch of cold feet because it's such a great song, but it's it's something that we have a lot of, uh, faith that it's going to be, a, you know, a beautifully well remembered song. Um, it's just a case of cold feet. So, being that your your water is so cold, anyways, you might as well, right? Yeah. Just jump on in. That's yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, there's been uh, also activity with porno for pyros, Perry. Uh, uh, what is the status of that? I mean, Paul, you know, just on the sidebar. You know, we've got um, new Jane's music, uh, new porno music as well. But the uh, the ambition, as I say, is we come back from Australia and it's right into the studio with Jane's. Excellent stuff. I was talking to Deck from uh, Amel and the Sniffers just last week, and he told me this amazing story about when he was younger and he went into a shop and he stole something. He was caught stealing and then he went home and played your song. <laughs> you have got to talk to Deck about that when you're down in Australia. We really, uh, we really like Amel and the Sniffers and um, I'm looking forward to spending some time on the road with them, getting to know them better. They've I been think having some a... great success in America. It's uh, fantastic to see you guys with them and with Smashing Pumpkins. And you you and Smashing Pumpkins go back a long, long way as well. Mm hmm We sure do. But but um Amel and the Sniffers, I'm looking forward to to uh touring with them. Um do you do you know a lot about them? Oh yeah, they're a very big band in Australia. Yeah. 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 And, and um and, and 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 a punk band too. I mean, we're talking about real music here. We're not talking about some, you know, manufactured studio group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Which, this, is, this is the OG right here. Wow. Ramones. <laughs> oh, Ramones, yes. Yeah, yes. we what one of our first tours, if not the first tour that we did, was opening up for the Ramones. Mm. So that really we cut our teeth on that tour. And, you know, touring with punk bands, it's the best. Those are the most fun shows you could ever play. 
Yeah, young and energetic. They'll keep you on your toes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? They're also they're also super open, open-minded, open-hearted. There's a lot of artists and gay people and straight people. You know, all walks of life go to punk shows. How do you, how do you feel about you know the the new generation of young punk coming up underneath you? Uh, you know, like you've been around for so long that you have inspired uh, the next generation of musician. Well, I certainly hope that I have, um, as as other bands inspired me, especially actually punk bands, because I'm entirely a self taught musician, and it was that sort of the spirit of the DIY came out of out of punk very directly. You know, just pick up a bass and make some noise with it, figure it out. You know, and um, and I've also I'm also a fan of Amo and the Sniffers and haven't had a chance to mention that. But I, too, discovered them accidentally through interest in another band, another act that did a short film with a company called PH, PHC Films, I think. It, it's an Australian company and they do like sort of edgy, um, beautiful, but, but really dark short films and, and music videos. And that's where I first saw Amo and the Sniffers. Um, was it that video of, with the uh, one with the angels? Did they do that video? Uh, I'm trying to remember. They're driving in a car, a shitty old car. <laughs> They're driving on the freeway. I think so. Right, right, right. She's and she's like, like barely contained. Angels, yeah, yeah. they're calling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's so. The one. Yeah. yeah, I love that video. This too is a great pairing with you and the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, and Eric, you've also had an innings with the Smashing Pumpkins, haven't you? So, you know, so uh, it's almost like, you know, the double header bands are both your bands. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I spent uh, probably two, two weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With Jimmy and Billy um, doing some writing some years ago. Um, but that was, that was, you know, a couple of weeks. Yeah. And, ended when I asked to be paid. <laughs> you might want to confront Billy backstage when you're in Australia then. He'll be able to pay you in Australian that. dollars. They won't be worth anything anyway. <laughs> oh. yeah. How's the economy doing now? Oh, the economy's doing fine. You know, we're, oh, good. Uh, so yes, good yes, yes. We're, you, you, you aren't coming to a third world country, Perry. Do not fear. <laughs> Hey, I've done it before. I don't mind third world countries. I actually feel very at home. Oh yeah, yeah. So you know, you've I done. Love, I uh, love third world countries. You've done well. You've done the pubs and clubs down here. You've played big day out. You've uh, been on, uh, you know, all levels of show. And this one's going to going to be a big one as well. Yeah, I think so. Um, but you know, as as uh, we've discussed earlier, starting out in the in the punk venues. And even smaller, Eric and I started out playing backyard parties, keggers. Mm -hmm. So from there, it's all good, you know what I mean? And sometimes those gigantic shows, they, you, they're they not as memorable as the smaller ones when the intimate ones, you know, you can really see up close, right into people's eyes, and I, I, those, they might be my favorite. Oh. Some of those shows, you know, we started before there was cell phones. Most people didn't even have cameras, but I, I like to remember those days as I, those shows as for your eyes only type of shows. Oh. And they, those ones, they actually stick in your memory. It's more important that you remember them, you know? Yeah. Um, and. Yeah. It's all good. Any level is fine as long as we're making music and, and having fun out there and, and the audience is getting off. Yeah. 1988 was a long time ago for the Nothing Shocking album. Uh, in its day, it wasn't that successful an album, but it's a centerpiece really of the live show even today. Um, does that surprise you that that album uh, has lived for so long? I don't know about any more or less surprising than other really good records, but um, I can't speak to that. But I, I can say that there is a spirit that Jane's always had that is still present, which is almost not not 
uh, it's almost naive, but like just really pure. Like we, we didn't make cynical choices and we still don't. Like we still care about just doing, going out there and doing a really good job on stage, playing music, celebrating music. You know, it's, it's remarkable to me when I see my peers and it's fine. Everyone has to make a living and make, you know, sort of strategic choices and, in their career and all that stuff. But, but I'm always really struck by how many decisions we made. And I think that's part of the reason why people responded to us the way that they did was we, you know, in some ways shot ourselves in the foot by saying, no, we won't do the MTV thing because MTV said so, or we won't do the, you know, like we did things for, for really pure reasons. And, and um, yeah. And I think that that, that sort of, spirit is still alive with us all these years later yeah and i'm proud of that i'm really looking forward to seeing jane's addiction again for the first time in 13 years in australia the world is a vampire tour smashing pumpkins uh Amel and the sniffers what a great lineup really looking forward to this uh, and eric and perry thank you for joining us here at noise11.com great to oh, meet you paul <laughs> <laughs>